Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So, guys, this is just a quick impromptu um, sharing of, of what came to us while uh, I don't even know where Cindy got this, but she, she got this notification about this. What is this 84,000 foot something uh, inside Earth's atmosphere? It's from the real BP Earthwatch. Uh, Jesse is somebody we've followed for years. Well, uh, our belief system is is definitely not his um, in in the sense that he's very very much uh, quote unquote um, traditional Christian let's say um, but he is a, a fabulous person and a great individual and he does an awesome job with his uh, videos and and we you can't help but love him it doesn't matter you know what your your philosophy your re religious take is. Um, but anyway, he was showing this object, which gives you the impression of a bow shot. Um, it looks very much like what we see when we look at uh, NOAA, when we go in and look at the space weather. Uh, you look at the, uh, the way the, the solar wind flows. We could pull those things up, too. I, I go on solar ham all the time. And again, uh, they will share a lot with us, and then we could go on NOAA as well. This being very, very impromptu, uh, we just wanted to share uh, some some clarity. Right, right now, everything is, is really quiet, as you can see. Everything is, is very quiet at the moment, um, kind of almost abnormally quiet at the moment. But Cindy's been picking up on something that's been giving her a lot of anxiety all day. Um, so when she saw this, she was wondering, is this, is this what, what I am uh, feeling? And so when you look at this, it, it looks like something in our atmosphere that is causing a, a typical bow shock effect. And he's saying it's about 84,000 feet. Um, Initially, you know, it makes us feel like some sort of object, like a ship or something along those lines. It could be some sort of technology. And in fact, that's really what it does feel like. Um, what he is looking at is, is this. This is Earth Null School. When you look at the upper atmosphere, uh, you can see here this object that uh, appears to be in true north, I mean true north, not magnetic north. As we know, the magnetic uh, field has been changing. It's always in a state of flux. That's just thing. Everything is always changing. Nothing stays perfectly static. There is no perfect static. Uh, everything is always changing. It's dynamic. And so m magnetic north and true north are not the same. As you guys know, I'm sure... The Earth has a 23 and a half degree tilt, and that's due to cataclysm, uh, quite honestly. This appears to be some sort of structure pretty much dead on true north, interfering with the flow of the upper winds. And Cindy's nodding her head, so I'm going to hand this off to her at this moment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this came from one of our very dearest family members who sent it to me, and you know who you are. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> and initially looking at this, the overarching word that kept coming through when I was channeling is this is disruptive. I can't say that, you know, it could, it could be a mothership, could be a ship, but the thing is, is it's huge and it's very disruptive. And today I just, I've been like so internally, <clears throat> internally dizzy and my pulse is a little bit up. I'm, I'm very off today. So I kind of felt like, gosh, it's either somebody local around here that I'm picking up or something else. And then this came in and I thought, boy, this sure would um, kind of give me an understanding of what's going on with my body is this this disruption. And this is why I love working with Mike, because I get part of the information and then he gets the second part and we're able to give you guys a whole picture. But I'll give you back to him so he can explain his part. So he's never noticed this before. I've never noticed this before. Um, in years past, I used to watch Earth Null every single day. I don't watch it every day anymore um, as we've kind of expanded out into other zones. But I will check it 
maybe every three four days especially if there's some something going on major weather and with the polar disruption uh, event that's expected uh, and you might say what polar dis disruption event uh, as you see, it's been forecast. This is severe weather EU, European Union. Uh, Mid-term weather forecast hint at a significant stratospheric warming de uh, development. Now, stratospheric warming is what happened in the past. It has happened in the past. And when you hear stratospheric warming, you might think, wow, uh, so we're going to get warmer. Well, <laughs> what this does is this disrupts the polar vortex. And this can send us uh, polar air into almost tropical regions. And it can really screw with uh, the weather systems to a huge, huge degree. In fact, look back to, you can remember this event, how topsy-turvy polar vortex brought record freeze to Texas. Meteorologists called it one of the biggest, nastiest, longest lasting vortices they've seen. And they've been watching since the 50s. This, again, is dated February 17th, 2021. And here we go. It, it's as if the world has been turned upside down, or at least the weather. You can blame the increasingly familiar pol polar vortex, which has brought a taste of the Arctic to places where winter often requires no more than a light jacket. Around the North Pole, winter's ultra-cold air is usually kept bottled up 15 to 30 miles high. That's the polar vortex, which spins like a whirling top at the top of the planet. But occasionally, something slams against the top. Ah, there you go. There's a little bit of knowing. Something slams against the top, sending the cold air escaping from its Arctic home and heading south. It's, hap it's happening more often. And so you can blame it on the weakening of the magnetic poles. But maybe it's not always the weakening of the magnetic poles. Maybe something, as the article is saying, is literally blocking the flow. And in these you know, days and times now, everything is being revealed. And, you know, I left some comments, and I'm sure they won't be well received by the, the fundamentalist Christian mindset over there. This has always been ETs. This has always been extraterrestrials, interdimensionals, inner Earth, as well as beings that do live inside the oceans as well. We are, as far as the denizens of Earth, we are the ones that are in the dark the most. We are the ones that don't really understand what's going on the most because we're in a system that is completely uh, created and orchestrated to keep us in the dark. Everything about our, our world system is about keeping us in the dark. From fluoridation of the water, the, the medical system, big F-A-R-M-A, the religion. Yes, the religion, getting us to think that there's no life outside of Earth. There's, there is. There's life abundantly on other densities, dimensions around us all the time. And, you know, that type of fundamentalist mindset comes really from the power structure. Because, again, it, it's, it's their books and, and their control manuals that create our mindsets. Again, remember, the number one printed book of all time is the Bible by a mile. Number two is actually the works of Mao. And then number three is the Koran. This is the belief structure that we're given. They don't want us really understanding uh, the technology here. And in days past, we would just say it's an act of God or it's an act of the gods when people recognized that there were beings with higher technology around them, and they called them gods, but there are always extraterrestrials, again, interdimensional beings, inner earth beings, and also beings that live under the oceans, uh, where we cannot necessarily see them, but they do watch us all the time. And now we're seeing technologies in play. We, we're aware of CERN, we're aware of HARP. There were comments again, uh, you know, what did CERN open up this time? Well, that's a good comment. <laughs> that is a good comment because, yeah, CERN is all about opening wormholes. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I mean, this is this is something that's <clears throat> disruptive and it's going to create a lot of disruption. Um, 
I mean, it, it's something that I feel it's very deliberate that's being done. And it's very big. I mean, the energy about it is just, uh, I just keep going back to that word disruption. And it's not just the one layer of disruption that we see. It's going to cause many layers of disruption, probably coming down onto Earth as well. And, 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 and read those words, polar vortex disruption. Polar vortex disruption, that's what we found. Is this an act of prophecy? Is this science? Or is this just understanding again uh, that there's technologies they'll utilize at different periods in time and they get us to ooh and ah and say, wow, it must be an act of God or an act of the gods. But no, it's just technology. You know, and then they make us think in the past, oh, God must be angry at us when it's not that at all. God is not angry at you. <laughs> the, the control system, if you're not, you know, well si seated within the control system, the confines that they put up for us, then yeah, they might do a little something to upset you. Yeah, the, the control system utilizes uh, a narcissistic behavior and, and gaslighting. So we can understand, you know, again, they put this um deep-seated conditioned feeling that you've done something wrong because you were born uh you're born into the flesh you're in a fallen state everything that happens is your fault that's what they tell you with their belief systems but it's not the reality they've just been narcissistic gaslighters and they're abusive but the reality is they utilize technology to create these things and you know, many people are aware that Tesla created a uh, earthquake machine, you know, a hundred and something years ago. Absolutely, we've seen man-made earthquakes. We see weather warfare going on. It's, it's all being utilized as a, as a war on humanity. Mm -hmm. And we're just, you know, Mike and I are different because we're not afraid to call it what it is. We're not afraid to, to point out the obvious where other people they'll bring this information up but they they always keep it tucked nice and neat in the confines of scientific boxes which we know is definitely funded there is true science uh but yet what they have is science used as sales it's all science for sales it's all about selling the system it's all about keeping the humans not in the know in the dark not understanding the bigger picture so again uh spoiler alert i would expect by the looks of this a severe disruption in in january where it comes to the polar vortex and we'll see some extreme winter events uh, let us hope they don't combine that with any sort of emp type events or acts of war at the same time because again yeah they've also given us prophecies let it let your your flight not be in the winter right because you will see such distress as has never been seen but then again look back historically this all repeats itself and thus we have the mud flood events we have tartaria atlantis lemuria mu it, it just this is the system and this is what the system does be safe out there source bless and namaste namaste